Okay, everybody, so we are out here today. We're gonna be butchering a goat today. Definitely a bittersweet kind of thing. This is the kind of lifestyle that we live. We like growing our own food and uh, raising them and a part of butchering and slaughtering animals is a part of what we do. So it is a bittersweet moment. Um, all of them have a purpose here on a farm uh, to eventually either be on the table or be a breeder and produce more animals. Um, it, it's not something we enjoy. I uh, never do enjoy it, but it is a part of farming, so we all have to get used. It's hard to get used to, but at the same time, it's very good to enjoy your own food on the table. Today, I'm going to be deciding to use a 9mm. Um, there's a lot of advantages of just using a Glock. I got a Glock, Glock 19, so it's a fabulous gun. Carried every day, or carried all the time. Um, so this, we'll just use a full metal jacket shell. Um, as you can see, I have self-defense personal rounds like it's hollow point. You can use a hollow point. Um, these are expensive bullets, but I would just, all you need is a full metal jacket. Never, and I mean never, personal opinion, I've done it many times, I never shoot a goat between in the, in the forehead with a 22. Um, or I never do dispatch goats shooting them in the head. Um, in the past, I have shot a buck with a 30-30, which is a big rifle gun. And he was a 100-pound buck, and he got up and walked off right in the middle of his head. So these goats are tough. They're, uh, um, their skulls are thick. And the best place to dispatch these goats is right at the spinal stem, the brain stem, the brain stem right behind the head. So that it lights out, you know, one shot, it's lights out. Another problem with 22 as a new farmer or new homesteader, you got to watch out for if you're dispatching with the 22 is shot placement. You got to make sure your shot placement is on key. Um, the worst thing that you want to do is have an animal be injured and it is a very uncomfortable, unpleasing thing. So you don't want to see that happen. And I have had that happen shooting in the forehead with goats and sheep. Never shoot goats and sheep in the forehead. I mean, if you, unless you know what you're doing and your shot placement's correct. Um, but like I said, right behind, I come up right behind him with the nine millimeter. So we'll come up, I'll grab his back leg. I'll come up right behind him and bunk him right in the head, right in the, right in the back of the head. And you, like I said, you can use a 22. I prefer not to. Um, the hole's smaller, nine millimeters traveling very fast velocity and the bullet's a lot bigger. So it's gonna do more damage quickly. And the main goal is, is to put the animal down as quickly as possible with um, no mistakes. I'll never get used to it. I'll never enjoy it, but I do love eating animals. Um, it's part of farming, guys. So it's never fun. Um, and God bless these animals. I thank them for their life. And I thank them for being a part of us and our family. Life is in the blood. And that's just all it comes down to it, guys. This one, we're gonna smoke a whole goat on the smoker and kind of run you guys through how we do that. It'd be an awesome experience. You know, we got a lot of family around, so we'll be back. All right, everybody, so um, it does help to have a triangle like this. Um, we use them on deer, hogs. Um, they work really, really well. Um, you can get them anywhere online, you know, they just, you can get them about anywhere. So what you want to do is you can just cut him open on a table just like that. I've done that before too, but we have a tractor right here. So we're just going to hang him up and show you through the process. So what you want to do is just kind of like a deer, come over here. You know, after you did, sh we did shoot him, we bled him out instantly. I mean, instantly. He, anytime you harvest an animal, you want to cut the throat and let him bleed out. And so, this animal here wasn't a breeding quality animal. That's why he got dispatched. So, come back here. Take your knife. There's a hind leg right here. And there's a little spot where that tenon is, just like a deer. You're going to want to get in that spot right there. Just make it a little hole. And do not cut any more than that. Just a little hole to stick your finger through. We're gonna put this whole goat on the smoker. Stay tuned for that video, cause it's coming, okay? See, he's gonna to be too small for that.
these these are for made for bigger animals nigerian dwarfs are smaller and by the way nigerian dwarf is some of the best goat meat you'll ever eat in your life tastes just like beef doesn't have um a goaty taste it's fantastic meat um like i said he's a he's a male so we need to get him dealt with before he started losing getting buck taint because we're going into the rut so what we're going to do is we're going to cut a little thing in here and tie a string on him and you could just skin him just like this but this does help just take a little string tie a knot we'll come back up here just like this now he reaches now This just makes it a whole lot easier when you're cleaning an animal. So as you can see, his intacts are still in. We're gonna leave them in. Um, so you always wanna start, you gotta cut around the hock. Cut around the hock, and we're gonna make an incision up. So this is the number one spot people get hair in their meat, is right here. So you wanna be super, super careful. And honestly, you could use a fillet knife. I've been using this buck knife for a long time. Once you get started, get under that skin, see, and just pop it. And see, this is the most important part, not getting hair in the meat. So you got to see, pull up on it like that. Get your knife in there. Look, just pop it. Do the same thing all the way around. Just get your knife in, pop it. Got to be very careful not to cut that tenant. That's what's holding him up. Pop it. See, pop it. And then you can pull this back. There. Now we'll do the other side. Same thing. Be very careful, this buck knife is super sharp. Just sharpened it. It is the trickiest part, getting the hair on the meat. So, now that you got him cut it like that, you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna get under that skin, just like this, and just cut him down. See how I'm doing that? Without getting in the meat, I got it in a little bit, but. Then you want to take them right here. Careful not to get the hair. Over here, lift up. See how easy it is just to kind of get that. Keep the knife always away from your hands like this. Look, and then just slide that knife down like butter. Down to there. Now, We're gonna do that. We're gonna get this out of the way. Get back, get the fur off. Now we're gonna come over here, get this testicles out of the way. See right here? Let's get your knife under. Get your knife under this hole. And you're gonna watch out for hitting, grab a hold of this, his male parts. Put your hands in there as far as you can, this crotch, just like that. And then put your knife under all the male parts. Like that. Cut. See? You don't want to hit those male parts because you might have PV in there, you know? So kind of just keep it like that. See? And then his cuts just dropped right there. So what you want to do now is you can do a lot of this with your hands. And I do have pliers. Let me go get them. Let's see. Let me go get them. All right, so at this point, when you get them all ready to start pulling the skin off, they sell these handy dandy uh, <clears throat> skinners. Use them on, I do them on deer every year. They're just really nice. They poke and they squeeze. So I just leave them in the shed and when you need them, you need them. So you kind of grab your pinchers and just pull. See that? See how effective those are? We ain't keeping his fur this time. Look. 
see that? It just pulls him right on down. And it's just beautiful. You need a set of these. You need a set of these if you're homesteading. Okay? You see that? Just work your way around. Flip him around. Into this side. Now you want to be careful to pull too much. We don't want his testes coming out. See that? So we're going to stop. Hang your hangers up. Put your knife back out. So right here, we're going to get this cut. Or this is going to come open. See what I mean? Let's get this. Let's get that cut. See that? We're going to leave his guts in him until we get him skinned. Some people eat the testicles, but we do not. <laughs> we do not eat testicles, but some people do. Some people like them. We don't eat them. There is a name for those. Somebody knows. I forgot the name of them. <laughs> All right, so just keep going. Keep pulling him down now. Now that he got his little intestine cut, we can cut that private part right here for his male parts. And just main thing is you don't want to cut through that. There, we should be able to use them now. So another option you can do before we get down there is do this right here. Cut his legs. Making a cut. You want to cut these feet off. Pop them like that. See? Just like a chicken leg almost. And then uh, throw them on the ground. Come over here, do this one. You gotta get that pop in that joint. Just make you a line. And you're in dwarf, pop it backwards. Maybe you wanna put your knife down. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes they're, you wanna cut yourself, so. Pop. You can find the joint too. I just pop them because they're. Little goats, you know. Deer, I find the joint, but pull it off. So that way, when we get the skin in, the skin will come off. And then we come over here. You have to keep turning them around to get to where you want them. I won't pull too hard and break that. Now, if it stops pulling, if when you're pulling this hide off, if you don't have them, you just gotta work your way with the hide and pull it little as a little like this. Grab the hide. Sometimes you can make a hole in the hide like this. Stick your hand in it, it gives you a handle. That works really well, actually. Just gives you a handle to pull on. You know, you can do it up here more if you want. If you were keeping the hide, you wouldn't want to do that. But we're not. See, see, it's little by little. Finish this guy off. Here's his arm. That's where we're getting hung on. See, little by little. Just little by little. Guys, just don't don't be in no rush. Don't be in no rush. You want to talk about delicious gourmet meal right here? Goat is Nigerian dwarf is one of the, my favorite meats. And what you got to do is find this armpit here. Uh, that's what I'm searching for here. See his leg. Once you find that armpit, make it a hole. Like that. 
See, I see daylight right there. Once you can kind of see, see the daylight right there. There's my finger. Pop a hole right there where that daylight is. Just like that. Grab your finger. And then just pull down. Watch it. See? Pulls right out. And then you just keep working your way down. And there's this is just slow and easy. No reason to be in a rush. You don't want to cut yourself. And grab a hold of that hole. Just keep working your way down. Get that neck. Let's do the other side. Same thing. Find that armpit. It's right there. that main thing is you just don't want to cut your meat try to stay out of the meat and keep fur off of the meat that's really what you got to do now we're going to get it down as far as we can you're going to have some blood and stuff by the neck because that's where we let them out some people eat the heads we don't but there's a lot of meat in the head but i shot it in the head so if you're gonna slit their throat that way, you could. But to be honest with you, I think getting the animal put down as fast as possible, just like he was, lights out, never felt a thing, just lights out. And that's honestly the best way. Nine millimeter the goat, back of the head. It's done deal. I've done it other ways, and this is by far the best way. It just thumps them. All right, so now, if you got a Sawzall, or a Hacksaw, or any kind of saw, you could pop that off. I'm just gonna try to do it with my hands. Um, if you don't wanna do your hands, just grab a saw and whack his head off. Right, I might be able to do it just by getting to that. I don't have a saw on me at this second. So you can find that tendon right there. Find that tendon right there. You kind of got to know what that's at. So there it is. You can just use a knife if you find the tendon. It's like a spinal cord, just like a any animal. Gotta break it loose. There. Now we'll try to. Just break it, twist it. That's it. And this is a wrap. Thank you for your life, buddy. Um, we're going to uh, discard that fur. Sometimes we keep the furs and uh, make little things out of them and set them around the house. You know, we have done it before. Um, today we're not going to do that. He was not really that flashy of a goat. So. Um, the real pretty ones we keep. So, as you can see, he's got a little bit of hair on him. What we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to get this hair, any kind of hair that's on here, off. Um, we're going to work that up here in just a second. Get you a bucket. I might have went a little too low. And then let's start getting his guts out. So the number one thing you want to do is always keep that knife away from the guts, slow and steady, like this. Now just keep your knife away. See, put your hand in there, go slow. If you're not used to a knife, you need a cut proof glove, okay? I've been doing it for years though, I'm kind of used to it, just you just gotta barely, like that, just barely touching it. Do not puncture the guts. I mean, it gets a little tricky right here, so watch your fingers. Let's 
come over here. Clean this stuff is out. We're gonna get rid of that. And we're gonna pull some of that cut down. There's his, all of his food he was eating, see? There's a, all of his organs. We're gonna keep the heart. We always keep the heart. There's his kidneys right here. Got two kidneys. There's a liver back there coming up. So, there's some kidneys and liver. And all them organs that are good. See? Just kind of falls out on its own. Boom. Down to the esophagus. Boom, that's it. Now guys, that was really easy. Nice, healthy liver. So after you get, um, as you can see, we harvested the liver. Got a nice liver, real healthy liver. We're gonna put it in a nice clean bowl. Set the bowl right there. And then you come in here and you gotta get his diaphragm. So there's a kidney right here. A kidney right here. I don't keep them, but I mean, dogs probably would eat them. But. Um, then you gotta come in here and open up. This is called the diaphragm right here. So open the diaphragm. And then he's got his lungs in here. See? His lungs out. A lot of this you can really do with your hands. Except that, so this part. And here's the heart. Actually, the heart is pretty good. I like eating heart. It's good. Uh, it's really healthy for you. Um, heart's pretty tasty. Some people like it, some don't. We are going to open this animal up because we're going to put him on the smoker. Uh, you, you can just quarter him up. However you would like, but for us, we're going to smoke this baby on the next video, so y'all stay tuned, because so we're going to watch this on the smoker and get this baby rolling. So what we're going to do next is, let's get them all cleaned up with some water. Okay, so get your hose. If you got a little sprayer thing, that's cool too. I love this green hose, it never kinks, so I just pinch it how I want it. Wash them down real good, get your animal real clean. If you've got a deer or something, not much difference, really. Keep it real clean. So the reason why he is a little smaller, because like I said earlier, um, bucks um, get real bucky this time of year. Um, and they're hanging with several other bucks and they will end up start fighting um, due to their hormones in the rut. So our weathers, when we weather our bucks, um, we let them get bigger. We raise them out for a year and they're a lot bigger. But that's why this guy's smaller. He'll be a one night meal for me and my wife. What's actually really good about Nigerian dwarf goats is that in a survival situation, you know, you have animals on the hoof that aren't extraordinarily big, like say a cow or a big old hog or something like that, that an animal like this could feed you and your family for a couple days with no storage afterwards. I mean, no storage in a freezer or nothing. So having animals on the hoof is something that is a very, very good thing to have. Especially say if you had no power or uh, situations go bad in the earth. So Nigerian dwarf goat really covers that arena really well. So what we're going to do with him is we want him to cool down as possible, quick as possible. We're going to get these hind legs cut off, put him in here, and we're just going to soak him with water for about an hour or two. Get some ice with ice and just chill his body down. We're going to drain the water out and then we're going to leave him on ice for a couple days and then we're going to put him on the smoker. Okay, y'all, 
well. So obviously you got to do something with guts, um, the fur, um, stuff that's not usable. Either you can harvest the fur and use it, like I said earlier, or um, when you're done, you need to discard it. If you have woods, you can go throw them in. But to be honest with you, we raise a lot of animals, so the last thing that you want to do is draw predators to your property. Uh, you can burn it, haul it. I don't like dumping stuff around people's land. It's just not right. So um, what we do is, you know, plant it in your garden. Now, the reason why I say that is this. I've had some of the best plants grow from areas that I buried chickens, <laughs> put uh, gut piles in. I'm not even kidding you. I had 15, 20 foot tall tomato plants where I buried chickens and stuff. So guys, let's get you a shovel, come out to your garden. Don't be afraid to dig around. All you're gonna do is add more compost to your garden. So look how rich this black this soil is. You know, we first moved here in the Ozarks. Trust me, it's not black like that. This is from years of adding 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 compost 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 see all the goat manure on there keep adding it all year round i mean look at the goat manure here on the ground see all that so nothing goes to waste guys nothing goes to waste so even though you're getting rid of his guts and stuff it's not going to waste that should be good enough now just take your gut pile And his fur, I like to take the head and put it at the bottom because that's what decomposes the longest. Put his guts in there. That's how we do it every year. Hey guys, so we're back in the house. We got the goat in the cooler. We're getting ready to take ice from our fridge and put it on him. Um, one thing I can give you an advice, as I've learned over the years here at farming, is anytime you have plastic jugs, like from orange juice, milk jugs, fill these babies up with water and put them in your deep freeze if you got the room. Keep these in your freezer at least. 15 or 20, as many as you can fit in there if there's no food in there. Keep as many of these around as you can. Reason being is because the ice nowadays that they sell you at the gas stations is terrible. It's like pumped with air or something. I mean, it just, it's terrible ice. It doesn't last long. So what we do is we just fill these up with water, freeze them hard. After, you know, a couple hours, I'm going to drain all this water and I'm going to put these all over them. Uh, and these stay rock solid for a long time. And you can keep reusing them instead of buying $3 bags at the gas station because they just, my, they rob you. Honestly, they rob you. So look at the ice you get from your house. See how solid it is? You know, and then you, this is real ice. The ice at the gas station is pumped with air or something. I could put it in there and it just melts in a matter of no time. So just word of advice, save all your jugs, you know. They work excellent. It's just like a rechargeable battery almost. So, just a little tip. So I like leaving them in there. We're gonna put this whole goat on the smoker. Stay tuned for that video, cause it's coming. <laughs> 